Hello guys, welcome to my channel. So today we are going to talk about depression. I'm going to tell you some facts, what to say, what not to say, and how to help them and how to get them help. Alright, so I'm just going to get started and jump in on it. So, I am diagnosed with depression and most likely people with depression have anxiety. So yes, I have both. I've been, I was prescribed medication at the age of 15 for my depression. Um, and I'm still working, you gotta work on your depression every day or it can take you down, right? So, this video is for people who don't have depression, who have depression, who wanna learn about depression. This video is for you. So I'm gonna give you some facts and so forth. So, if you didn't know, depression is common. A lot of people with depression feel like they're alone, but technically they're not. Did you know that 17.3 million adults in the US have at least one major depression episode? I did not know that, and that's a lot of people. So next we're going to move on to some signs of depression. So, one, loss of interest of things that they enjoyed doing recently and they no longer want to do no more. That is a sign. Change in weight. You either lose weight or you gain too much weight. Difficulty sleeping or oversleeping. A lot of people here, like people with depression, sleep too much. But like me, mine's I don't sleep enough. I'll stay up and nap for two hours because my head is just running and running and I think about all these negative thoughts, right? Another thing is energy loss. You have no motivation to do anything like showering, brushing your teeth, feeding yourself. Another thing is feeling worthless. People with depression feel empty, feel like they're not good enough, like they're alone in the world. And it might not be true it's literally how they feel empty alone have no other option besides suicide that's how painful it gets right um, that's like thoughts of suicide that's another sign and there are people out there that will scream out for help in their own way before they commit suicide there's people out there asking for help and nobody knows the signs to be willing to come and help them. They might see the signs, but some people don't know what to say and that's okay. People with depression, it's okay. It's okay to feel that way and people who don't understand, it's not your fault. So how people develop depression, it is, there is family history. Um, I have depression history in my family, so I could have got that way. There's also major life changes in your life. Uh, that's have happened to me too. If you've had trauma in your life, I do have PTSD. I have went through a lot of trauma in my childhood. So that does carry on to adulthood. Um, stress can do it. If you have a lot of stress at work, um, certain meds can do it if you don't take your meds the right way that's like the medication I take if I do not take it the right way it says you will get suicidal thoughts so you have to monitor your depression you have to take care of it you have to take care of yourself before you get into a major depressed episode that's another thing your depression goes and comes you gotta watch for the signs and catch it before you feel like there's no other option so now we'll go into common treatments for depression. Like I said, I take medicine. If you go to your local doctor and let them know how you're feeling, they will help you out. And also they recommend doing therapy with your medication. That's the next thing. I, I did therapy for two years. Um, I would still be doing it, but when COVID hit, they took out the one-on-one -on -one interaction and did Zoom. But if you're like me, I need one-on-one. -on -one. I need to feel you're here to listen to me. I don't need to feel like you're looking at me. That's another thing. Listen to the person to listen. Don't listen for it to fly by. Next, we're going to go on to... What, what were you on? Common treatments, therapy. Okay, my bad. I have like a little paper here to, like, to remind me. So that if you see me like looking down, that's why. Um, 
exercise. If you don't get a daily, your daily dose of exercise, it could affect you. If you did not know, when you exercise, endorphins are released, the feel goods. So even if you're depressed, get out there like I did today. Go do a 30 minute walk, feel the sunshine, breathe. Even if you don't want to, get them legs moving. What's another one? Um, healthy diet. If you're like me and have this sweet tooth, if I eat junk, I feel like crap. Then I feel like I look like crap. And that triggers my depression. Um, if you have family that don't understand depression or don't know what to say, you need to get a support group. Because when you feel alone and you don't have a support group, you are alone. And I will admit, I do not have a support group. So if you want to be in my support group, I'd greatly appreciate it. Because when I'm alone, I'm alone. And it's dangerous. Um, eliminate stress. At work, at home. Anything you can do to eliminate a little stress on you, do it. Because that stress will take you out. Um, get eight hours of sleep every night. A healthy sleep is a healthy mind. When you're energized, you feel good, right? Um, set healthy boundaries. Isn't that hard? I hate the word boundaries because it's so hard. And the word balance. How do you balance stuff equally? I don't know. But, like at work, I am an overachiever. I will pick up everybody's slack. I'll do stuff that's not even my job. Just to help out and it will bring me to my knees um, I get overwhelmed I'll yell after so long and just have a whole breakdown if you do not need to do certain things at work don't do it do your job that's it because you need to remember you're the most important thing because if you're not happy like me when I'm depressed I don't want to go to work I don't. And a lot of people lose their job because of depression. So, get healthy boundaries. Do what you need, but don't overdo it. And then the last thing I have on my list is meditation. It's real good to shut off your mind for a good 15 minutes. If you're new at meditation, start out with five. And I know it's really hard to set your mind off. So, think about the beach or count up and count down or focus on your breasts and I set a, a timer because so I'm not looking at my phone has it been five minutes it's been five minutes and it's okay to drift away just bring your self back in if you have thoughts that's okay acknowledge your thoughts and then let them go and try to clear your mind again do that every day and you'll start feeling a little better next we are going to go on on how to help someone with depression it's really important to know what to say what not to say if you don't know what to say it's okay not to say anything else the major thing is just listen right so start by learning all you can about depression google tells you a lot of things um books magazines there's a lot of information out there just go find it because you can save someone's life um, remember, you cannot fix them, but you can help them. This is not your fault that your loved one has depression. It's not your fault when they're depressed and you didn't do nothing wrong. It's not your fault. It happens. You can help them, though, to get through the episode a little bit faster because we can get stuck. We can get stuck in that depressive stage, and it's very unhealthy. Um... Be a compassionate listener is much more important than giving advice. Isn't that true? Because your advice can be more toxic and make things a little worse if you don't know what to say. Encourage the person to talk about feelings and be willing to listen. Kind of like the same thing I said um, last time. Just listen if you don't know what to say. But here I'm going to tell you how to start a conversation. Um... Some things you can say is, I've been feeling concerned about you lately. How are you feeling? Then listen. Do not interrupt them because they will shut down. My ex was good for that. Interrupted me every time I tried to talk to him. So I would shut down. That's like, no, I don't know if I told you guys I'm going through a breakup right now. So that's what encouraged this video. I'm trying to help you. If you can help me, that'd be great. But do not interrupt them if they're willing to speak. Right. Another thing is I have noticed some differences in you and wondered how are you doing. 
That shows that you are concerned. That you want to hear what they have to say. So, when it's your turn to respond, these are some things that you could say to them. You're not alone. I'm here for you during this tough time. That lets them know, right? They're not alone. It's going to be okay. Um, and I'm going to please tell me what I could do to help. And if they do tell you how they can help, do it. Don't just ask them and then not do it. Because then once again, we're going to feel like we're not in that important to be helped. Right? And if they're willing to tell you, that means they're, they, they're willing to fix the issue. They're not just giving up on life. Um, so. So the last one is, even if I'm not able to understand how you feel, I care about you and want to help. And that acknowledges that we know that you, we understand that you don't know, but you're willing to help. Like, knowing that people care about us when we don't think nobody cares about us is a big thing that will help us. Um, so, what you should avoid saying, this is a big one, so listen clearly, because my ex was good for telling me that my life's not that bad. Suck it up, right? And then that makes me feel like crap. It makes me feel like... I'm feeling like this for no reason and it's all my fault. And we don't want to feel like that because the last step is suicide when we feel like that. When we feel like there's no way out, that's the suicide part. So, what you should avoid saying is this is all in your head. Everyone goes through tough times, which we understand that. We're just having a tough time getting out of the crap. Um, just snap out of it. You think we would choose to be depressed and sit in our room and isolate and not eat and not sleep and not shower. Like, that's a great choice. We would love to do that and cry all day. No. We can't just snap out of it. Um, your life's not that bad, etc. Girl. Boy. Whoever you are. That's not the problem. It's our mental health. That's the problem. Not our life. The mental health part. We think our life's crap because we feel like crap. Alright, so suicide is very real. If you believe your loved one is at risk, do not leave them alone. Once again, do not leave them alone. If they don't want you in the room, go in a different room. Sit outside their house. Do whatever you can to stay around. Because when we're alone, our head goes and talks all this negative stuff. And we're in so much pain that the last choice is we think we need to go to heaven. Right? Not the right choice. So, in the U.S., dial 911 if you think your loved one is at risk of suicide. Or, you can call the Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 800-273-8255. Once again, that's 800-273-8255. And they speak Spanish and English. And now when you call that hotline, if you are the person calling, they will talk to you. And then they will ask you if they need to send someone out to your house to help you. And a lot of people with um, suicide thoughts don't want people coming to their house. That's the last thing they want. They want to do this alone. Right? Not the choice. Talk to that person. They will talk to you. They will help you. Now, if you're the person calling for another individual, they will help you and tell you how to help. Or if you think that someone needs to come help you with them, they will help you with that. Do not be afraid to call. That's what it's for. Call. Talk to someone. If you don't have no one to talk to, call. That's their job, to talk to you and help you. Okay? So, it's available 24 hours. They speak English and Spanish. Any other country, dial your local emergency number and they can help you with further steps. Um, depression clouds your judgment and distorts your thinking, causing a normal person to believe that this is the only way out. And it's not. Because this too will shall. This too shall pass. That's what I wanted to say. Right? When you feel like you cannot hold on no, any longer, just tell yourself, hold on one more minute, hold one more hour, hold on one more day. Because eventually it will pass. We don't believe that right now, but it will. Right? I'm going through a breakup. I feel like there is no way out. Right? But I have to remind myself that it will pass. 
and that I am okay and I have that number if I need help right don't be afraid I am here too if you need someone to talk to message me and I will message you I'll give you my number and we can talk you can help me and I can help you you're not alone I love you Ooh. so that is my video for today I hope that you learn someone and help somebody out I hope I would I hope I helped you out so thank you for watching enjoy your day you are loved